I'm here today with Chad Stoker, Global VP of Industrial Managed Services for GE Digital. Welcome, Chad. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about digital twins. And it seems like every software company has some version or other of digital twin and probably some other companies as well. Uh, how does GE Digital define digital twin and, and, and what technologies do you bring to the party? That's a great question. So I think really a digital twin is defined by the outcomes it's trying to achieve. Uh, using ARC's framework on a digital twin, uh, it's composed of either engineering technology, which tends to be process simulation or 3D models, or operational technology or information technology. And we really define our digital twin as focusing in around enabling the life cycle of decision making for field service, focusing in on the integration of operational technology and integration, uh, information technology. So can you give me a couple of examples of how your customers are using digital twins to transform their operations? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we helped customers uh, manage more than 8,000 assets uh, in our center last year and helped generate $187 million of customer documented savings in 2019. Um, we've helped customers with the digital twin applications for jet engines in flight to uh, submersible pumps and oil wells, uh, to turbines on power plants, to uh, you know, packaging, palletizing machines and manufacturing. So the application, the content configuration is different per customer and per use case, but ultimately we're helping customers move corrective maintenance to uh, predictive maintenance. We're helping customers take their strategies from being defined once every five or ten years to being defined and, and optimized in real time. Hmm. Okay. I mean, those are some great examples. Uh, but you know, sometimes I see folks who are early in their digital transformation journey uh, thinking about digital twin. That's kind of science fiction. Um, so is this something that, uh, that, that can be real for every company? Yeah, you really are seeing the industry move from you know, digital twin as a pilot or as a use case or, or a case study to uh, digital twin at scale, transforming whole organizations. I think the key is to make sure you go with an experienced vendor who can size the technology for your particular application. So one of the most important things for customers to understand is a holistic risk ranking of their equipment. For some types of assets, the absolute most economical decision is a run to failure you know, model. Um, but other assets are more critical, and that's where you want to apply the more critical technologies. So you want to use the right technology for the right application to make sure you get fast ROI. One of the, uh, the big things we hear about in, in the context of Digital Twin is um, unplanned downtime, reducing that. Um, can you talk about how uh, GE Digital approaches that? Yeah, and so when you talk about unplanned downtime, you're really talking about you know, improving reliability, which you know, we talk about as digital reliability. The same kind of techniques and, and standards that have always been in play, but new technology really allows it to be applied at scale, allows you to digitize the work process to ensure that you're doing it. Fundamentally, what you're talking about when you're leveraging the, these machine learning models is early warning, and, and that's really all the value that they bring. You know, today customers might react to hard alarm limits, so when something hits an alarm, then they go take action. But by that time, the failure might have already exhibited secondary and tertiary effects that are really costly. And so what the machine learning can allow you to do is dive inside the hard alarm limits uh, without being inundated with false alerts. So you can start to take action when the model, when the actual signals deviate from the model as opposed to waiting to the hard alarm. And that difference might be hours, it might be days, it might be weeks, it might be months, but it allows uh, maintenance organizations to go into an economic planning cycle. Um, what is the best, most economical way for me to mitigate this failure? Is there a simple fix? Do I need to wait to the next outage? Um, and that, those, that's really how you affect you know, your on-plan downtime. Okay, so what types of digital twins solutions do you offer? And I mean, realistically, customers are going to have a lot of assets, you know, existing assets. Is there a way to help them get a digital twin of those? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been creating digital twins. You know, uh, our core machine learning technology was spun out of Argonne National Labs 20 years ago. And we've been creating digital twins for, for more than 15 years. And, and really, that digital twin blueprint that we've created, it now has, you know, millions of asset run hours going through it. So we bring that blueprint to the table. And that really allows the customers to get ROI on their solution much, much faster. Uh, we have a library of more than 300 blueprint types um, that we can bring to customers. Um, 
And, you know, reliability is a multi-vertical uh, uh, discipline. So a lot of the blueprints will apply no matter what vertical we, we approach. Whenever we do go to a vertical where there's a specific asset type we haven't encountered before, we partner with the customer and can quickly build in days and weeks. We can configure the content leveraging that technology that we've developed over the years to solve those specific use cases. Okay. So maybe you could talk a little bit about... Uh the role of, of artificial intelligence or machine learning in the context of, of digital twin? Sure. You know, I think it's a key component. It's a component. It's not the entire, you know, suite. So when we talk about a digital twin, it's the, all the configuration required to do a complete, you know, uh, plan, do, check, act, life cycle for an asset. But one key component of it is machine learning. And really, the, the aspect of it is, you know, customers have more and more data than they've ever had before. Sensors are getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, you start to take video feeds with you know, things like drones and all those kinds of things. And so there's more data than humans can look through you know, anymore. Um, and I've always tell customers, if you have good people looking at good data, that's a waste of time because you need all your people analyzing problems and coming up with solutions. So really, you know, the machine learning, where it works really well is to pre-filter through all that data, suggest, you know, identify uh, causes early, uh, suggest diagnoses, and really help serve up the information to make your reliability engineers more effective. Okay, great. I've been speaking with Chad Stoker of GE Digital. Thanks a lot, Chad. Thank you.